attraction of a block magnet to the steel plate. A block-shaped permanent magnet is pulled toward the steel plate. The task is to calculate the force. It could be a bit tricky in quick field, because to calculate the force you should surround the body with the integration contour. And to get the accurate results you should keep some distance between the contour and the body's boundaries. But there is no distance between the pivot magnet and the steel plate. So I am going to put the pivot magnet some very small distance away from the steel plate to be able to draw the contour in between. And I am going to demonstrate you how to calculate the force using the virtual rock approach. Okay, let's start quick field now. In quick field I create a new problem. Magnet. Next. Problem type is magnetostatics. I am going to simulate only a single cross section, so the model class is plane pale, length units are inches, and the model depth is 1.5 inch. Finish. On the left is the problem pane, and on the right is the geometry model editor window. First, I insert a rectangle with the dimensions 0.25 by 0.25 inches, and the insert point is here. Insert. Close. Zoom in. This is a cross section of the permanent magnet. Next, I'm going to insert another rectangle with the dimensions 0.25 by 5 inches. The insert point will be here. It will be shifted to the right by 0.1 inch. Insert. Close. This would be the cross section of the steel plate. In fact, the magnetic field is distributed not only in these parts, but also in the air outside. So I should draw the air block boundary. Switch to insert mode. Change the line type to be the half arc. Click and drag to draw the air block boundary. Zoom to fit. Now let's assign labels. To labels you can explain the geometric object's meaning and provide material properties. Switch to select objects mode, click to select the object and type in the label name here. This is air. Let's zoom in. Switch the zooming mode off. This is the payment magnet and this is the steel plate. And I should assign labels to the external boundaries. Hold the control button pressed to select several objects. External. Now let's provide physical properties for these labels. Double click the label name in the tree. Magnetic permeability of the air is 1. Magnetic permeability of the steel is 1000. And for the permanent magnet, First, I should specify the Hertz force, which is 954 kA per meter. And the direction is to the right, 0. To specify the remanent flux density, switch on the nonlinear flag. Here you see there is a one point on the curve corresponding to the Kurtzer force, and another point is remanent flux density, which is 1.26, and the field strength at this point is 0. I do not have any more data, so the beach curve is a straight line, and a straight line could be defined by one point and a permeability. So when I will click close, we field automatically replaces the linear dependency with a constant magnetic permeability value. Let's see. Close. 
Far away from the pigment magnet, the magnetic field fades to zero, so at the external boundary I specify zero magnetic potential. Now before I can run the analysis, I should build the fine implement mesh. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Save all problem files and solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. Let's zoom in. The field lines looks broken. That's because of the insufficient mesh quality. Let's solve and refine to get more accurate results. Okay. You see the mesh density was automatically adjusted. Here near the payment magnet and the problem was solved. Now let's take a look at the results. Again, let's zoom in. Now the field lines looks like smooth curves, which is physically correct. You can adjust the field picture and switch on, for example, the color map of the flux density, or choose to display some other field parameters. And the correspondence between the colors and the numbers you can see in the legend. My task is to calculate the force. I'm going to use the contour tool, click to select the pigment magnet, follow to the integrals, and here is the mechanical force. The force is direct to the right, the pigment magnet is attracted to the steel plate. The force magnitude is 13.8. Now let's calculate the force acting on the steel plate. Click again the permanent magnet to unselect it and then click the steel plate. Mechanical force is direct to the left. The steel plate is attracted to the permanent magnet and the force magnitude is 14.6. You may note there is a difference in the force magnitude. That's because this is not a correct way to build an integration contour. Contour clear. In fact, you should build the integration contour around the body and you should avoid the boundary between the body and the air. So you should build the contour in the air. The contour should be counterclockwise directed. There is no magnetic force acting on the air, so you can build the contour freely. Contour close. Now the mechanical force is 15.2 newtons. Let's put it here. This is the force acting on the payment magnet. Now let's construct the contour the same way around the steel plate. Contour clear. Zoom out. I'd better Adjust the field picture and switch off the color map. OK. Now I'm going to build the contour around the steel plate. Contour close. Mechanical force is pointing to the left. Let's copy this value. Paste it here. Plate. Now you see the difference is really very small, less than 1%. My task is to find the force in case when the magnet is attached to the plate. But in this case I will not be able to put the contour in between. So the solution is to place the magnet very close to the plate by keeping some small air gap in between. OK, let's open the geometry model. Let's zoom in. Now the distance between the pigment magnet and the steel plate is about 0.1 inch. You can see the coordinates in the bottom right corner. Let's move the magnet closer to the plate or the plate closer to the magnet. Switch to select objects mode. Click to select the plate, right click, move selection displacement to the left by 0 
0.995 inch. Okay. Let's zoom in. I'm going to add a small edge here to be able to measure the distance between the pavement magnet and the steel plate. So switch to insert mode and draw the line. Switch to select objects mode. Click and remove this part. Now let's again zoom in. Switch to select objects mode. Click to select. And here you can see the line length. OK. Let's again build the fine entanglement mesh. Save all problem files and solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. Now I should build the contour in the air gap between the steel plate and the payment magnet. I better specify the coordinates manually. Contour add lines two and a half times 10 to the power of minus four. This would be in the middle of the A gap. This would be the start point. And this would be the end point. Close. Now let's continue adding the lines to the contour. Contour close. And I should change the direction to the contour clockwise. Contour change direction. Now I can calculate the force. Integral mechanical force. So this is the force when the pavement magnet almost touching the steel plate. OK, now let's calculate the force using the virtual walk approach. To be able to do so, I need to measure the stored magnetic field energy. Contour clear. And click to select all bodies. Go to the integrals and here find the magnetic field energy. This is the energy when there is the gap of 5 10 thousandths inch between the magnet and the steel plate. Now let's open the geometry model. Zoom in. And move the parent magnet in contact with the steel plate. Click. Hold the control button press to select multiple objects. Now press the alt button to start the drag and drag the payment magnet here, then release. Now the payment magnet is in contact with the steel plate. Steel, payment magnet, air. Again, let's build the fine payment mesh, solve the problem, and measure the energy. Select all bodies, integrals, magnetic field energy. Copy this value. This energy for the air gap of zero inch. And to find the force, we should calculate the energy increment and divide it by the gap length. Copy energy mean minus energy divided by the gap length. And I've got 2.1. In fact, you should divide not by inches, but by meters. So to get the correct value, I should divide this by 0 0.0254. OK, and this is the force value. Copy it here. Virtual work. Now, if you compare these two values, you can see the difference is really small. So it seems you can use the small gap approach whenever you want to get accurate result.
If you search for the attraction of the block magnet to the steel plate on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the result pictures and download the simulation files. Simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any Quickfield edition, including Quickfield Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.